Galaxy Geography Global Atmospheric Circulation Global atmospheric circulation is the transfer of heat from the equator to the poles by the movement of air, i.e. how air moves heat around the world. But why does air move in the first place? Air moves due to the difference in air pressure. Wind blows from the high pressure to the low pressure. High pressure is when cool air descends, whereas low pressure is where warm air ascends. So air moves from high pressure, the cool air descending, to low pressure, the warm air ascending. How does global atmospheric circulation work? The whole system is driven by the equator. It's the hottest part of the Earth because of the tilt, so the sun is most strongest there. So air then rises at the equator because the air warms. This leads to low pressure and rainfall. When the air reaches the edge of the atmosphere, it cannot go any further, so it travels north and south. The air becomes colder and denser and then falls, creating high pressure and dry conditions at 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Now, why does this air become colder and denser? Because it's no longer where the equator is. Large cells of air are created in this way. So the hot air drives air up at the equator and moves it out and then it drops back down as the equator's solar radiation is no longer there. Air rises again at around 60 degrees north and south and descends around 30, 90 degrees north and south. The names of these cells are shown in the diagram. Hadley, Ferrell and Polar. Global atmospheric circulation creates winds across the planet and these lead to areas of high rainfall like tropical rainforests and areas of dry air like deserts. Now let's look at Hadley cells. So the first cell moving from the equator up and down is the Hadley cell. At the equator the ground is intensely heated by the sun. This causes air to rise which creates a low pressure zone on the Earth's surface. As the air rises, it cools and forms thick Coulombius clouds, storm clouds. This air continues to rise up to the upper atmosphere and the following then happens. The air separates and starts to move both north and south towards the poles. When it reaches about 30 degrees north and south, the air cools and sinks towards the ground forming the subtropical high pressure zone. As the air sinks, it becomes warmer and drier. This creates an area of little crowd, cloud and low rainfall where deserts are found. The Hadley cell is then complete. The air completes the cycle and flows back towards the equator as the trade winds. In the northern atmosphere, hemisphere, the wind flows to the right and are called northeast trade winds. In the southern hemisphere, the winds flow to the left and are called southeast trade winds. This is due to the Coriolis force and friction. We'll talk about that in another video. Now let's look at the feral cell. The feral cell occurs at the higher latitudes between 30 and 60 degrees north and south. Air on the surface is pulled towards the poles, forming the warm southwesterly winds in the north hemisphere and northwesterly winds in the south hemisphere. These winds pick up moisture as they travel over the oceans. At around 60 degrees north and south, they meet cold air, which has drifted from the poles. The warmer air from the tropics is lighter than the dense cold polar air and so it rises as the two air masses meet. This uplift of air causes low pressure at the surface and the unstable weather conditions that are associated with 
mid-latitude depressions. Much of our wet and windy weather in the UK is due to this. Finally, the polar cell. At the poles, air is cooled. Why is it coldest at the poles? Because due to the angle of the Earth's tilt, that's where the least solar radiation happens. So air is cooled and sinks towards the ground, forming high pressure. This is known as polar high. It then flows towards the lower latitudes. At about 60 degrees north and south, the cold polar air mixes with warm tropical air and rises upwards, creating a zone of low pressure called the subpolar low. The boundary between the warm and cold air is called the polar front. It accounts for a great deal of the unstable weather experienced in these latitudes. How does global atmospheric circulation affect weather around the world? Well, at the equator, due to the sun directly overhead, it receives a lot of solar radiation. Therefore, warm, moist air rises and forms clouds, so it rains a lot. 30 degrees north and south of the equator, can you tell me what cell that is? It has released most of its moisture as rain. The dry rain means there are few clouds and little rainfall, so deserts are often found at this latitude. And in the UK, it lies close to the low pressure zone at 60 degrees north. Warm air rising brings a lot of cloud cover and rainfall due to westerly winds. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and for more advice, follow me on Instagram at GCSE.